hello guys so in this video i will be going over square roots and cube roots so when you think uh, of the shape square a square is a two-dimensional shape right so it's a 2d shape and a cube is a three-dimensional shape so it's a 3d shape right so when you think about square you might want to associate with it with two and when you think of cube you might want to associate it with three so what exactly is the number two or three when you multiply a whole number like for example let's take five so when you multiply a whole number with itself twice so five into five so i'm multiplying five two times right then this will be 25 and this will be called a perfect square why square because i have multiplied the whole number twice so i have squared the number i've squared the number and what i got as a result is a perfect square why perfect because i multiplied a whole number with itself right and in the same way if i multiply five three times then i will have it cubed why cubed because i multiplied it thrice and what i will get is 125 which is a perfect cube why perfect because i multiplied a whole number and cube because i multiplied it thrice so when you multiply a number twice it's called square and multiplying any number thrice is called cubed but the number must be multiplied to itself right okay so this is squaring a number right when you multiply a number with itself it's called squaring but when you go in the other direction it's called square root so when you find the root of a number then it's called a square root if you if you write two over here then that means that you are indicating you are you have to find what number multiplied by itself will give us this result so it will be because 5 is getting multiplied 5 the answer of this will be 5 in the same way if i write 125 over here and if i write cube root over here then i have to find what number is multiplied by itself thrice that gave us the result 125 so the cube root of 125 is 5 into 5 into 5 which is 125 right so the forward process is called squaring and the reverse process is called square root this is called cubing and then this is called cube root right so how do you find a square root or a cube root of a bigger number so let's look at it this way that for example if we have a big number and we have to find the square root of it so let's say we have 784 right so we have to find the square root of 784 now finding the square root of 25 was easy because we knew that 5 times 5 is 25 because it's a square of a smaller number but if it's such a big number like 784 so we don't know what number squared is 784 so what we do in this case is that we prime factorize it and what i mean by that is i will find the prime factors of it so since this is an even number i will start with two so two two three times is six so we are left with one nine and then two this again is an even number so we'll divide it again by two so two one times is two and then nine times is 18 and then six times is 12 then this again is a uh, even number so we'll divide it again by two and then we have 2 9 times is 18 and then 2 8 times is 16 this again is a, uh, is um an even number so we'll divide it again by 2 so 2 4 times is 8 and 9 times is um 18 then this is not divisible by 3 not by 5 so then we have 7 so we'll divide this by 7 so 7 times 7 is 49 and then we will divide it again by 7 that 7 times 1 is 7 right now we write 784 as a product of its prime factors so 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 7 into 7 right now because it's 2 uh, it's uh, because it's square root then we will 
make groups of two what i mean by that is we'll group the two same numbers together so we grouped the two twos together so let's highlight it so we group the two twos together then we group another set of twos together and then we um group the sevens together so what we'll have is we'll take a single number from each group so we took a two from this group a two from this group and a seven from this group so two into two is four and four into seven is 28 so that means that the square root of 784 is actually 28 you can check this by multiplying 28 by itself in the calculator and you must get 784 mm, 784 right and we do the same things for cube roots so what we basically do is for example if we have a number 200 2744 right so 2744 and we have to cube root it so we do the uh, same thing first we uh, prime factorize it so since this is an even number we'll divide it by two so two times one is two and then two times three is six seven and then two you again divided by two because it's an even number so two times six is twelve two times eight is sixteen and then two times six is twelve again this is an even number so you divide it by two so two three and then two four is a three, eight and then two three is a six right then you can divide it by three because three plus three is six plus four is ten no you cannot divide it by three because the numbers don't add up the numbers add up to be 10 and 10 is not divisible by 3 so this will not be divisible by 3 this cannot be divided by 5 because it's it doesn't end with 5 or 0 so you'll divide it by 7 so 7 so 7 4 is a 28 and then we have 6 so 7 9 is a 63 and then 7 times 7 is 49 and then 7 times 1 is 7 right so now you write it as a product of its prime factor. So we have 2,744 equal to 2 into 2 into 2 into 7 into 7 into 7. So the only thing that changes here is that because it's cube root, which means 3, so you'll make groups of 3, 3 same numbers, right? So you group the 3, uh, three twos together and you group the 3 sevens together. And then you take out one number from each group so you take out a 2 from here and a 7 from here and 2 into 7 is 14 so this means that 2744 is the cube of 14 right which means that if you multiply 14 by itself if you cube 14 three times then you will get 2744 right so all the examples we have done up till now were either perfect squares or perfect cubes perfect squares are, or perfect cubes is when whole numbers are multiplied with itself but what if it's not a perfect uh, square or a perfect cube what i mean by that is what if it's a number like 50 50 is not a perfect square right so if you have to square root 50 and you have to estimate it without using a calculator, then what you'll do is you can quickly recall the uh, squares of numbers, right? Now 50 is a, a small number, right? So its square root must be a single digit number, right? So let's just recall squares of single digit numbers. So 2 t times 2, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, and 8 squared is 64. So it lies somewhere between this, right? And because 50 is closer to 49 than 64, so what you do is you estimate this 50 and you write a square root of 49. And square root of 49 is 7. So this will be estimated to be 7. In the same way, if you have to calculate the cube root of a specific um, number, so let's say the cube root of um, 123. So 123 is not that big of a number. So again, this must be a 
uh, cube of a single digit number so you so you recall the cubes of single digit numbers so 2 cubed is 8 3 cubed is 27 4 cubed is 64 and 5 cubed is 125 so this lies somewhere between here and because 123 is closer to 125 than to 64 so this means that we can estimate it and write as uh, write it as cube root of 125 which will be equal to 5 um so basically when you have to estimate the square roots or cube roots of specific numbers they usually give very small numbers at not and not very large so the answer is almost always a single digit number and if it's a bigger number then you will obviously have to use a calculator so for example if they say square root of any number so let's say um so let's say 856 so you can use the calculator to find out that this will be 29.25 right so it's not that big of a deal. That's it for this video. I hope you all learned something. Goodbye.